All right, so this is the code I'm dealing with. Shift actuator, all mode, all wheel drive, transfer case issue. I'm gonna start it. Because it was happy that time, it hasn't turned, there it went, turned red. It does a signal integrity test, which I'll show on the Pico capture. 2020 Nissan Armada. The little video that I uh, put up first was basically this thing was failing as soon as the engine started, which kind of led me to think it had some sort of a circuit integrity test going on. Although sometimes we could start, start it and cycle this switch inside many, many, many times, four high to four low to auto over and over and over, and then it would fail and set the exact same code and wherever it failed at, that's pretty much what gear you had. So if it failed in four low, you were stuck in four low. Um, me and a, a, a guy I work with, uh, Jay, him and I were tackling this thing. And um, first time I'd ever seen a failure with this system. Uh, reading through the ins and outs of it, uh, it's pretty uh, pretty complex. When this thing is in auto, it has the ability to um, apply more front wheel or take away front wheel depending on road conditions, slippage, steering angle, G sensor, all kinds of different inputs. It has its own control unit. Uh, it's on the CAN line. Uh, first thing I notice is this thing is controlled by a 30 amp fuse or is 30 amp fused. And inside this motor here, uh, this is bolted to the back of the transfer case. It looks like a giant window motor. Uh, of course, you have your motor, transfer motor temperature sensor, internal speed sensor, all kinds of different inputs. Uh, this thing really, really is active and is pretty daggone sensitive. And I'm going to admit, when we first started tackling this thing, we had the uh, consult hook to it. And uh, this dude had four pages of data pids to monitor. And uh, just like seeing something shiny in the sand, it captivated me. And I kind of lost my way a little on this. Uh, we spent probably a little more time than what I care to talk about looking at data. Some of the data in the ECM is wrong. Um, I'm going to file a few things with uh, Nissan on that mainly this temperature sensor um, spec versus known good is about a volt off uh, didn't like that this transfer rotary position it basically monitors a shaft that spins that this motor turns and what we learned was three percent is four low and about 58 percent is uh, either four high or auto but after messing with this thing it was getting kind of late in the end of the day and we were messing with it we would get it to actually operate we're looking at data looking at data does this make sense does this make sense i really didn't have a lot of experience to rely on and was kind of coming to dead ends uh i was getting frustrated when the the service information really wasn't matching what i was seeing so i finally looked at my coworker and i said you know what let's just go old school let's put an amp clamp on this thing and let's just see what this motor's doing so he pulled the glove box out and we got a Zeus out. And I don't remember exactly which wire I put it on, but I put an amp clamp on one of these wires and we finally got it to kind of operate a little bit before it failed. And um, wow, it, it looked terrible. What the Zeus told me was um, the amp trace was horrible and I needed to get a Pico scope out. So I'm gonna put a Pico scope capture up. It's gonna be the good capture. Uh, basically, the next morning, we, we hooked a Pico to it, and, and we saw very condemning information. So, with all this glamour, and this cool control unit, and all these inputs, and CAN diagnostics, and all this fancy stuff, this case study boiled down to power, ground, and current flow. And like I said, I lost my way a little bit, but I kind of reeled myself in. 
went back to the basics and we're basically looking at an electric motor. This thing either turns clockwise or it turns counterclockwise. It just depends on which way the power flows through it. So I'm gonna actually show the good capture first and then we're gonna work ourselves backwards and then uh, I'll show you the bad capture and then um, all right, That'll so this is a good capture. So, Hang on a minute. Let me basically, we put a new motor on this thing. It's uh, the actuator. It's just an electric motor um, that we condemned. Now, in the beginning, I had mentioned something about a signal integrity test. Well, the, the service information doesn't tell you any of this. Usually, in my experience, when you first turn a key on or start an engine, um, if you have a fault immediately, I feel like that uh, a voltage is being sent down a line and a computer is looking for a return. Uh, and, that, and that's pretty much what's going on here. So this first little blip right here, the little, the little red and the little blue, we're just gonna zoom in on that. So here we go. So the computer sends out a signal and this is open source voltage and it's basically looking for that signal to come back to it uh, and if it does see it did a little ground here it looked for a little current and then it pulsed that one and looks for a little current so it passed the signal integrity test so therefore it, it's going to allow the motor to work now remember this is the good capture um, i don't know what pins i were on was on but on these captures basically if the blue is applying voltage then the amperage is going to go up uh, I don't know which way it was turning left or right I can't I can't remember but honestly it, it doesn't really matter at this point this is a pulse signal so anytime you have a power and ground on a pulse signal you should have current flowing and that's what I was looking for no matter where you zoom in on this capture whether it's the red being pulsed or the blue being pulsed the current is absolutely beautiful it is a sawtooth pattern it matches the duty cycle as it should see here the reds being pulsed so it actually was driving the amperage a different way and now the blues being pulsed and it changes and it's just picture perfect it I always say that current flow through a motor especially if it's pulse modulated it, it should look like a sawtooth um, and it, it just and that's what sold me on the bad capture which I'm going to show you the bad capture of course uh, this is what I did not see I know I'm kind of going through the do this fast but I don't know which way the motors turning left or right I just know that this is what you want to see if you have power and ground through a motor and it's being pulsed that's what you want to see and that and that basic little fundamental is kind of what saved my bacon on this thing because i really did stick my head down the rabbit hole on this i uh, i got mesmerized by all the data and all the cool inputs and outputs and but uh, it boils down to this i had a pulsed positive the red was ground current rises it drops it raises it drops it raises you know and that and that's just basic dc motor operation and that's really all it took to fix this car was just recognizing that now granted these are going to go backwards because the red is pulsing so it's not the currents going backwards i didn't flip the clamp over but uh everything is just perfect and that's what it should be now, on the original capture, if I would have saw this really nice pattern on the bad motor, I would have kept looking elsewhere because I would have known at least at that point the foundation was good, meaning the motor looked good. The motor was doing what it was told, and I would have probably started looking other way. But like I said, once I, uh, once I started seeing those bad current ramps, which you'll see, um, it was game over and Jay and I learned a little lesson on these things uh, we took a little peek in the rabbit hole we didn't like what we saw so we backed out went back to fundamentals so enough playing with this capture 
I'm going to show you the good one or the bad one. Basically, what we did was we started it. It was in auto. He was cycling it from four high, so each time you see these big spikes, to four low and then back to auto. So as that motor maybe meets some current, meets some resistance, it probably jumps up a little uh, as the control unit's commanding it. Um, because you are moving mechanical parts. So I'm thinking when these jumps go up like that, the motor's kind of stationary until it makes the move it wants and then it starts pulsing it again. Um, that's just what I'm assuming uh, just by looking at it. So let me queue up the bad one uh, and you'll, you'll definitely see. Just remember those pretty sawtooth patterns that were all throughout this capture. And then uh, you'll definitely see the bad one. And I figured out why it was uh, failing, sometimes working, and sometimes it would fail this uh, the integrity test. So uh, hang on, let me get the bad one up. All right, here's a, a little picture of the signal integrity test when it failed. Basically what you saw in the very first little video uh, when I was inside the truck. Uh, so the, the blue trace pulsed, sent a little uh, signal down. The red never got it, and you can see the green is current flow. So uh, that was an immediate failure. And I found out later, and we'll go over in this capture, why it was intermittently failing this. Because I believe inside the motor, I had some sort of an open circuit. I don't know. I couldn't take the motor apart because... Um, I had to turn it back in for a warranty. So let me turn these off. Let me turn A, B, and C. All right, so basically we got the same setup. Now, on this capture, it passed the signal integrity test. So it allowed the motor to kind of turn and do, go through its motion so I could get a good reading on what it was doing. And I mean, just right off the bat, this looks like a hell here. Uh, so let's zoom in. Let's zoom in right in here. Let's see what we see. All right. So the blue is pulsing this thing. And the blue is really wide at the top. So basically this thing is pulsing a power. It is applying power. And when the tops are wider than the bottoms, that means it's probably 60-70% duty i could do a math channel but i've got so much time on the screen that software hates it um, so basically what i've got here is i've got uh, the computer really wants this thing to move and for a while it was doing pretty good um, we can see we've got a decent sawtooth pattern uh, when it applied power i had ground on the red you know it got what it wanted until we get into here Let's see what we got here. Let's move it over here. Now you can see right in here, if I pull a snap down, I don't have any current flow. Something was open in this motor. I don't know if it was an open commutator, um, but see that flat spot right there? That is no current flow. That is an open... That is an open circuit because the re the red represents ground. So basically, it sent this voltage down, and it didn't move. No current was flowing because I had no path to ground, and there's ground right there. So I think what was happening is every now and then, this motor would stop, whether you turned the key off or it, it would stop on a dead spot. It would stop here. And then it would fail the circuit integrity test because when it your next key cycle, it would shoot the voltage down. Well, that's an open circuit right there. So it would never get its return. Um, we did pull this motor off and uh, Jason m manually turned this transfer case. We wanted to make sure the transfer case wasn't locked up, which it wasn't, it, it, it moved fine. Um, and then you could beat on this motor a little bit and you would kind of kick it in the butt and then it would start working again you can see it's not the healthiest signal 
but it was a signal and then it would hit a dead spot and it's it's kind of throughout the whole capture uh, somewhere around it it's just definitely a bad connection anytime i see this crazy signal like all this gibberish that looks good and when it comes around this certain commutator maybe i've got a bad connection in here this thing might be oil filled i don't know and it and i've got some serious connection issues going on and then it looked like it sparked up but we originally hooked the zeus up to this thing and when i started seeing all this garbage here i i said you know what let's get a pico out because i may do the do a youtube on this thing because it's just a lot easier um the zeus is a good scope it's just um it's not on this level in my opinion so i'll use zeus. i have a zeus so i'm not biased i just know uh I just know when the Zeus is outmanned, and if I really need to see something, I get the uh, Pico out. But it's kind of rhythmic, the way it's going, 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 dead, going, 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 dead. So I don't know how many commutators this thing has in it, but if I were to do a bunch of math and try to figure something out, I would say one of them is burnt or open. It's definitely an open circuit. But the cool thing is, is when it's behaving, it actually looks... Well, I would say that's not that good. But uh, look at that. I mean, that looks pretty good. So anyway, I just wanted to put this up. Uh, I was motivated to do this. Uh, the, the data was crazy amount of data. I got myself a little confused with the data. Uh, I was running around in circles. Uh, I should have had this thing figured out a little sooner than what I did. I guess the moral to the story is get the clamp out, look at voltages, see what's actually happening within the motor. So we put a new motor on it. It's fixed. Customer's happy. I'm happy. Learned a little lesson. Old dog still learns new tricks. And uh, thank you guys for listening to my rambling and bambling. Thank you, Jason, for uh, helping out. And uh, we both learned something on this thing. See you on the next one.